Second one is to listen. Third one is to feel. You free, you feel their breath against your cheek for 10 seconds. You put your cheeks by the mouth and the nose to feel the breathing. So it's very, very important. So the breathing, the one breathing should be safe first, then followed by the one bleeding. Followed by the one bleeding. Okay? Then followed by anyone with a um, bone injury. Okay? So if one is still conscious, or if one is unconscious or, or semi-conscious, but is still breathing, if one is still breathing, how do we help the casualty? There's what we call recovery position. In first aid, recovery position. The person must be put at the recovery position. So how do I put someone at a recovery position? If such a person has spinal cord injury or neck injury, or the person is unconscious but still breathing. So leaving the, leaving the victim in this position for a long period may cause them to experience nerve compression. So what are the things? How do I put him or her in such a position? Number one, you kneel next to the person. You will kneel next to the person, place the arm closer to you, straight out from the body position. Then position the far arm with the neck back at the hand against the rear, against the rear cheek. We will see the, the picture. That is how you grab the person, you bend him and you make sure the person is put at this position. That is what we call recovery position in first aid. Then we have um, hyperventilation, hyperventilation. Hyperventilation is also known as excessive breathing, which causes a reduction of carbon dioxide concentration below normal. The carbon dioxide concentration will be below normal. And such a person is, will suffer from hyperventilation. So how do I, what are the causes of hyperventilation? Stress can be a cause of hyperventilation. Anxiety can be a cause of hyperventilation. Consequence of lung disease, head injury or stroke can cause hyperventilation. So what are the symptoms? The person will be unnaturally fast and deep breathing. The breathing will be so deep and will be making noise. Then attention seeking behavior, the person might be using some gestures just to get attention of people. Dizziness is also a symptom. Faintness, trembling or mark trembling is also a symptom. Then headache is a symptom. Chest pain is also a symptom of hyperventilation. Then a slow speech. The, people, the person won't be able to speak very well. So how do we treat someone that is suffering from hyperventilation? When speaking to the casualty, you need to be firm and be kind to be firm and be kind. If possible, lead the casualty to a very quiet place where it may be better. It may be better, it may be better able to regain control of his breathing. It may be better able to, re then let him repeat his own exhale air into a paper bag. Give him a paper bag, give him a high paper bag. Let him breathe into, into such paper bag. All right, and it's not also advisable to use plastic bag because it could cause suffocation. Then we have fainting. Fainting. Fainting is a brief loss of consciousness that is caused by a temporary reduction of blood. Okay, fainting is a brief loss of consciousness that is caused by a temporary reduction of blood flow to the to the brain. When blood flow to the brain is is temporarily reduced it can cause fainting, okay? So what are the causes of fainting again? When one has taken too little food and flee, dehydration can cause fainting, low blood pressure can cause fainting, lack of sleep can cause fainting, over exhaustion can cause fainting. If one has exhausted himself, he has so work fatigue can cause fainting. So what are the symptoms? 
a brief loss of, of consciousness, causing the casualty to fall to the floor. Okay, then the pulse will be very slow. The, the person will look pale, his skin will be cold, and of course, they'll be sweating. So, how do I treat a fainting person or a fainted person or someone that has fainted as a first aider? Number one, you will need to lay the casualty down and slightly elevate the leg. We need to lay the casualty down flat back as, as we have it in the picture then uh, you slightly elevate the leg of the casualty then you make sure he or she has plenty of fresh air in other words uh, there'll be need to unbutton such a person if the person is putting on shirt we need to be unbutton and of course i okay i will advise here in case of a female unless there is no female around it's advisable that a female should handle a female, okay? Then as she recovers, reassure, reassure her and help her sit up gradually. As she recovers, reassure her, then help her sit up gradually. Then looking for and treat any injury that have been sustained through falling. If such a person has sustained injury through falling, then such injury meant to be treated. Then we have shock. Shock occurs when the circulatory system fails and insufficient oxygen reaches the tissue. If the condition is not treated quickly, vital organs can fail, then death can be the ultimate. Then shock is made worse by fear and pain. So what are the causes of shock? Shock can be divided into four types. We have hypovolemic shock, hypovolemic shock, then we have cardiogenic shock, we have distributive shock, and we have obstructive shock. We have hypovolemic shock, we have cardiogenic shock, we have a distributive shock, and we have obstructive shock, all right? What is the cause of hypovolemic shock? It's caused by loss of blood volume. When the blood volume is low, whether through bleeding or profound dehydration, such a person will go through what is called hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock, all right? Then we have cardiogenic shock. This is a result of weakened heart that is unable to pump blood as efficiently as it once did. If the heart is weak, unable, and unable to pump blood, such a person will suffer from what is called cardio, cardiogenic from cardiovascular, cardiogenic shock. Then we have, uh, it always occur after a massive heart attack, okay? Then we have distributive shock. Distributive shock is, a, is as a result of lack of distribution of blood to the organs. If the bloods are not flowing to the organs, then such, such a person will suffer from distributive shock. Then we have obstructive shock. Obstructive shock is, is as a result from obstruction to blood flow at a site other than the heart. If the heart is not receiving enough blood, if the heart is not receiving enough blood, if there's an obstruction to blood flow at the heart, that, then obstructive shock can be experienced. Then how do we treat shock? There is, uh, th there, is, uh, there is a work called pale green, pale green, pale green. P stands for, it's spelled P-E-L-C-R-O-N, as you can see it. Then that abbreviation, P stands for position. P stands for position. It means position the casualty on their neck. When someone is suffering through shock, position the casualty on their neck. After the person has been positioned on the neck, then elevate the leg. Elevate the leg. Okay? When the person is positioned on the neck, it, the airways will be open. Airways will be open. Then elevate the leg. Then losing any clothes at the neck, 
or the or the waist or the wrist, like belt, should be losing, or whether it is binding, whether it's a skirt or any lapad that is tied, that such things need to be loose. Then climatize. C stands for climatize. Don't let the place be too hot or be too cool. Don't let the place, the environment be too hot or be too or too cold. Then hard stands for reassure. Keep the casualty calm. Keep the casualty calm. The end stands for notify medical personnel. Get a medic. Notify a, pass, a medical personnel. Okay, as a first aid has been uh, applied. So, what are the symptoms? Number one, of shock, the skin will be pale. Then there will be restlessness and nervousness. The person will also experience thirst. Then there will be loss of blood. Then confusion. Then there will be fast breathing. Of course, there will be vomiting. The skin will be blushed, especially around the mouth and lips. There will be a kind of blister, all right? Then uh, the person will be perspire, will perspire freely. There will be free perspiration, okay? Then the person may now pass out. The person may pass out, okay? Then we have be or honest thing, be or honest thing. In our workplaces, it's possible to be seen by honest or honest or B. So what are the symptoms? Number one, there is the injured area or the stinged area will be reddish and swelling. The area, the part of the skin that has been stinged by B will be reddish and will be swelling. So how do we treat as a first aider? How do we treat one that has been stinged by honest or B? The stinger should be removed as fast as possible. Whether the ornate or the bee should be removed as fast as possible. Okay? Then reduce pain and swelling with cold compress. With cold compress. Then we have cramps. All these are injuries that we might call minor, but they are very important to know how to handle them. Cramps are painful sensation caused by a contraction of or over shortening, usually of most when muscle contracts, then cramps is uh, is experience. So what are the causes? Cold or over exertion are the causes of uh, cramp. When you when you over exert force on a particular point and uh, on a muscle, then uh, cramp will come up. So how do we treat? Stretch the muscle and apply it or cool. Preferably it. Apply it. Let there be rubbing. Let it be generated in that particular spot. Okay? Cramps from lack of salt and water. Stretch the muscle. Drink water and increase salt intake. So cramp can also come as a lack of, uh, from lack of salt or water. All right? Then we have choking. Choking is, a, is another injury that, need, that we must know how to handle as a, as a first aider. Choking from the environment into the lungs. The, if the oxygen intake is obstructed, then a person will experience what is called choking. Okay, so what are the causes of choking? Introduction of foreign object into an airway can cause choking, which, become, which becomes struck, stuck. Okay, when the airway is stuck, when it's blocked, then one will explain what is called choking. Then respiratory diseases. If one is, whoever is having respiratory diseases, we also experience what is called, uh, we experience choking. Then if the airway is compressed, if someone is strangled, if the free flow of air in the airways is, is restricted or hindered, then can cause uh, choking. Okay, the person who will, will, will be unable will be unable to speak or cry out, the face will look blue, 
then victims will be grabbing Israel's throats. Okay, as we have it in the in the picture, then there will be weak coughing. There will be labored breathing. The breathing will be done with force instead of easy. Then, which will now produce high pitch noise. The breathing will be making some noise. Then, unconsciousness comes in. Then, how do we treat someone that is suffering from uh, choking? We need to encourage the victim to cough in case of swallowing, in case the person has swallowed something that is breathing the airways. We need to uh, encourage the victim, the victim to cough. Then we also need to give back slap as we have it in the picture. Use of hard blow with heel of the hand on the upper back of the victim. Okay. Then, uh, then we have a uh, Abdominal trust, standing behind the victim and using hand to exert pressure on bottom of the diaphragm may result in injury like bruises or 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 fracture of ribs. Okay. Then we have fracture. Then we have fracture. Fracture is a break or crack in the continuity of the bone. Fracture is a break or crack in the continuity of the bone. The symptoms, pain at or near the fracture site, there will be pain, tenderness on gentle pressure, at a very gentle pressure, okay, swelling over this fracture site. There will be swelling over the fracture site then there could be deformity, irregular, irregularity of bone, angulation or rotation of limbs, depression of bones. So wherever there is fracture in any part of the body, there will be deformity, there will be a swelling up. Then if it's a joint, the joint, of course, can, uh, there will be a swelling up by the joint, okay? Then loss of power, the person will lose power, then, uh, of course, signs of shock will also be noticed. What is this dislocation? Is the displacement of one or more bones at a joint. Displacement of one or more bones at a joint is dislocation. Okay? It usually occurs in the shoulders, in the elbow, the thumb, the fingers, and the lower jaw. All these places there can be dislocation, of course, all right. Then, um, what are the pains? Pain at the site of injury, there'll be pain. Limited movement at, at the joint, there'll be deformity, there'll be swelling up, then there'll be tenderness. Fracture and dislocation treatment. How do we treat fracture and dislocation? Support and immobilize the injured limb. Immobilize the injured limb, support the person, don't allow the person to move. Then use a splint, if possible, in order to prevent movement of the injured person. Arrange for casualty to be removed to hospital. Then in doubtful cases, always treat as for a fracture. Do not attempt to replace bone. Then we have uh, bones. We want to look at the bones. Okay, we are, there are three degrees of bones. We have a, we have first degree bones, which can be referred to as minor bones. We have a second degree bones, and third degree bones, which are referred to as severe bones. First degree bones is minor bones, and this involves only the out, outermost layer of skin and is characterized by readiness swelling and tenderness at times when your hand is used it happens to me i think sometimes i try to clear glasses so there'll be swelling up and it will be reddish on the palm that is the first bone it's called a mine it's called minor bone then we have a second degree bone which is a severe bone any one percent Bone affecting layers of the epidemic, giving rise to rawness, blisters, 
and the presence of a clear flu can be fatal if affect over 60 percent of the body so this one is has to do with peeling of the upper layers of the skin okay that is second degree bone then we have third degree bone all the layers of the skin are bone and there may be some damage to the nerves fat fat tissues and muscles skin may look waxy pale or charred okay Purple fluid is observed and no pain is felt by casualty. Urgently medical attention is required. All right, then we have, uh, okay, that is minor bone. Minor bone, first degree bone. So how do we treat minor bones? Number one, you rinse the injured part with cold water for at least 10 minutes to stop burning and relieve pain. The injured part for 10 minutes to, to relieve um, pains, to relieve pains. Okay, we need to gently remove any jewelry, riches, I mean, any jewelry, watches, belt, or construct. Please, just one minute, please. All right, thank you so much. All right, so we're talking about uh, bone, okay. Rinse the injured part with cold water for at least 10 minutes to stop burning. Then gently remove any jewelry, watches, belts, or constricting clothing from injured area before it begins to sweat. In other words, if someone is having a bone, they will need to remove clothing from such an area, that we need to remove a watch a belt from a such an area. Then cover area with sterile, sterile dressing or any clean, any clothing that has been sterilized. Cover the place with it. Then um, non flossy material and um, bandage loosely in place. Note, cold bones should not be rinsed with cold water. And cold water should never be applied to any, anyone with extensive bone, okay? Let's take note of that. Cold bones should not be rinsed with cold water, okay? Then we have second and third degree bones. How do we treat someone suffering from this? We need to lay the casualty down and protect the bone area from contacting with the ground, if possible. We need to lay the casualty down and protect the bone area from touching the ground, if possible. Then we need to rinse bone with plenty of cold water for at least 10 minutes or use burning cold gel. There is burning, bone cooling gel. There's bone cooling gel, all right? Then arrange for casualty to be sent to the hospital. The casualty should be arranged to be sent to be hospital, arrangement should be made, okay? While cooling the bone, watch for signs of difficulties in breathing and be ready to resuscitate if possible. While cooling the bone, if the casualty of the patient or the victim is experiencing shock or is, is unconscious and the person find it hard breathing, such a person should be resuscitated, okay? Remove any ring, watches, belt, shoe, or bunny clothing from injured area before it began to sweat. Remove burnt clothing unless it is sticking to the bone. Okay. 
cover dressing with the sterilized dressing or okay cover dressing with any sterile dressing or some other suitable materials to prevent the infection infection and germs this is not necessary if bone is on face in other words if the bony face should be covered with any sterilized dressing any clean dressing okay so as to prevent germs from entering into the body do not bust any blister touch infected area or apply any lotion to the inj injury as this will retain heat within the bone okay then we have lastly we have electric shock we have electric shock okay how do we rescue one that is uh, shocked or going through or that have been shocked or that is going through electric shock we need to break contact of electric source with casualty by switching off mains or meter point by switching off the mains that's the main supply of of the power into the premises or facilities by switching by switching off or by switching the meter off that is how to uh, separate such a person from the shock only if it is safe for you to do so okay if unable to reach cable stand on insulating materials like plastic marks wooden balls and push casualty slim away from the source with a broom or stick with a broom or stick not wet stick not wet stick dry stick or broom do not touch the person until the power supply is turned off the person shouldn't be touched until the power supply is turned off then we should also be careful in the areas that are wet let's also be careful in the areas that are wet if such area where the shock of core is wet then there is need for us to also apply uh wear something that will prevent uh, us from uh, having contact with the wet floor. And uh, of course, we are also to die uh, emergency rescue code in case of uh, any eventualities. For Nigeria, is 199. I don't know of Ghana, but Nigeria, 199. So we are advised to also dial our country code. In case of such, a, in case of such, excuse me, in, in case of such uh, issues, okay, this is where the this is where the lecture for to, for this. I'm true with first aid practice. I don't know if anybody have any question. Does anybody have any question? Can can someone hear me, please? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello, Dr. Banito. Do you have any question? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Ishmael Kwame. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Mr. Ishmael Kwame, let me let me uh, unmute you. Please, you can unmute yourself now. Mr. Ishmael Kwame. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, doctor, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. 
All right. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah, there's one question I just want to ask. Uh, maybe there is a, a fire outbreak in a particular room yeah. and uh, there's no ventilation or maybe the access to the room is, uh, is also locked. How do you go about, do you, do you force the door or how do you break into that person and save the person locked up in that incident? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Whenever there is a fire accident and there is no ventilation, or there's no entry into such uh, facilities, the first thing to do is to, or let me say the preferable thing to do is to break the door open and possibly look for a way to, or through window. Is that break the door open or break the window open so as to rescue the victim? Okay, yes, yeah, so as to. To rescue the victim, I will open and to rescue the person. Okay. All right. Have I answered your question? Yes, you do, Doctor. All right. Okay. If there is none, uh, any other question, please? Okay. Is all right. All right, if there's no, I will quickly run through another class. If Dr. Barnetto will give me go ahead. Okay. Um, Is that right? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. We are through with first aid practice. And we want to... We want to... Okay. Any question? Okay. Thank you. Is that right? Sir? All right. If there's none, I want to take the next class, which is... a. Uh, which is crisis management. Crisis management. Okay, crisis management. We want to look at crisis management. Are we still together, please? Okay. We want to look at crisis management. <laughs> All right. We look at what a crisis, what makes a crisis. <clears throat> look at what makes a crisis. We want to look at evolution of crisis. Okay, thank you. We want to look at evolution of crisis. We look at designing, testing, and implementation. We look at framework for crisis management. <laughs> Then we we'll look at crisis management landscape and organizational crisis. We we'll look at strategic planning and assessing the crisis vulnerability. We we'll also consider forming the crisis management team and plan. Organizational strategy and crisis. Crisis management taking action when disaster hits. Then crisis communication. We we'll look at importance of crisis in, of organizational learning. Then uh, we we'll look at one or two exercise and the summary. Okay. What makes a crisis? Now, I, I firstly want to say, I want to say that crisis management is a process. I want to start by defining what crisis management is. 
is a process by which an organization deals with a disruptive and unexpected event that threatens to harm the organization or its stakeholders. Crisis management is the process by which an organization deals with a disruptive and unexpected event unexpected and disruptive event that threatens things to arm the organization or its stakeholders. It's a process designed to prevent or lessen the damage a crisis can inflict on an organization and a stakeholder. So what makes a crisis? There are three types of crisis. You have those that are Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Please, can you hear me? If you can hear me loud and clear, if I'm audible to you, if I'm audible to you, can you please type one one in the chat room? Okay. Okay, Mini, you can hear me. Mr. Ibrahim, come on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right. So we have uh, those that are manufactured. We have crises that are manufactured. Then we have those that escalate from an accident. We have accidents as a crisis. Then we have crises that are manufactured. Then we have crises that escalate from, from an accident. Now, crises that arises from accident are often most tragic, but the easiest to deal with. In the story of the switch air crash, the plane had disappeared and 229 people had died. The cause of crash remained mystery, but numerous conspiracy theories have been put forward. On the night switch air reacted, on the night switch air reacted with commendable haste and immediately made information available to the old world. It made $20,000 to each victim's family. The generous gesture received a warm response. Switch Air did not try to blame or fight what happened, but simply accepted the situation and thought of the victims. So what do we need to learn from this? This is a classic model of how to handle crisis well. Whenever a crisis happen in any way, whenever crisis ensue or, 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 or call, the first thing to do is to save the situation, not blaming or looking for who to blame. So switch here was very well prepared. It reacted sweetly and sympathetically to those who have been bereaved. 
It handled the media well with updates on its website and regular conference. Okay, then we have manufacture crisis. Manufacture crisis. The, the green groups and non governmental organizations are, for the most part, unelected and therefore unaccountable. Okay. Okay, the huge noise and the ensuing crisis against projects such as brain spa and genetically modified organisms are orchestrated and managed by just a few people. Certainly, they are successful in changing public opinions on this issue, but this is not a fault of the system. This is the fault of the companies and they cannot shut this. Certainly, the media will play its part, but that is known and expected. Politicians will play their part, but their behaviors again is both known and predictable. No audio? Please, can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, all right, thank you. Okay. Please, Mr. Someone said no audio. Please check your set, check your device, check your connection. Thank you. So certainly they are successful in changing public opinion on this issue, but this is not a fault of the system. As I said earlier, this is the fault of the companies and they cannot shut this. Certainly the media will play its part, but the behavior again is both known and predictable. Then we have an understanding industrial crisis. Industrial crisis can be understood only within the context, context of the evolution of industrial societies following the harbor, following the harbor 1975. We view this evolution as a proceeding on two distinct but connected fronts: the development of forces of production and development of normative order of society. Okay. Mismatches between these forces create sterling problem for society by disrupting the principles of social organization. Sterling problems lead to crisis if they extend beyond the organization principles of any given society. Like Dr. Barneto was saying this morning uh, about the crisis going on in, in our nation, Nigeria, talking about the protests. If the crisis have been handled well, before it began, maybe we won't have what we have, and we don't even know what's going to happen next. Because as I said earlier, this I said this morning, I was just smiling where I sat. Something that is happening now has never happened before. And sincerely, yours, uh, this year, a lot of things will be determined. And as we have the NSAS or NSWAT, um, protests going on in Nigeria and some part of the world, it will, it may escalate beyond, as a matter of fact, it's escalating beyond NSAS. It's going beyond NSAS. In my area in Badagri here now, <laughs> there's a protest going on, Operation Fixed Badagri Road. It's a protest and it's going on. So there's protests almost everywhere in every nook and cranny of the country because the crisis before it began, was not handled well. In other words, every crisis can be prevented if well and before escalation. So what are the characteristics of industrial crisis? They have keys, number of key defining characteristics which, which are discussed below. We have triggering events. We have responses to crisis, large-scale damage to human life and environment, crisis resolution and crisis extension, large social costs, large economic costs, multiple stakeholder involvement. So preventing things from going wrong, okay? How do we prevent things from going wrong? We need to establish the purpose or context for risk management planning. That was discussed this morning. Then we need to assign responsibilities for risk management planning, 
by establishing a risk management committee, RMC. Then we need to acknowledge and identify organization risk. Every organization must acknowledge and identify risk surrounding their production. Then evaluate and prioritize risk. Risk will need to be evaluated and be prioritized. It was mentioned this morning. Then determine how your organization will manage this risk. Every organization must know and determine how risk will be managed, will be managed. Then implement risk management plan. Then review and revise the plan as needed. I want to look at evolution of crisis. Most large companies, as, pa as part of their risk assessment, undertake an assessment, assessment on how likely it is that a particular crisis will hit them. It is an extremely valuable exercise and should be undertaken with due rigor. Okay. So it's, it's possible to assess and predict crisis. That's what we're saying. Then certainly one can look into many indicators. For example, the vulnerability of the industry to environmental damage. However, these indicators are not in themselves totally reliable and some high crisis prone industry continue without a crisis for decade okay many that there are indicators that shows a, a highly crisis prone industrial areas and there are some industries that are in industrial prone i mean highly crisis the industrial prone area that have not experienced crisis for decades because crisis evolute, crisis metamorphosize. There's an evolution of crisis. It moves from one level to another. When the management of crisis goes badly, it usually the corporation that has it, that has either ignore or fail to recognize the importance of some of these indicators. Okay. The share size of today's corporation and their growth makes them more vulnerable than ever to crisis, either from natural origins or those manufactured. Crises are extremely difficult to predict. This problem is excavated by the trend in the 1970s and 80s to develop managers as specialties. The finance director knows about finance and little else. Similarly, the marketing director the technology director and the operation manager all have their own special field. However, in 1990s, this trend began to be reversed and the managers as a, special, as a generalist, as well as a specialist began to come into work. In other words, we are, what this place is saying is this, as we all agree that there's no way crisis will not ensue one way or the other, there's need for managers to be trained on how to undo crisis. And of course, there's need to have crisis handling department in every organization. So these are the areas uh, uh, managers we, are all managers are aware of their, of power and influence of politics and political environment in which they operate. The, the media and its realm and influence on how to deal with it. Then the value of company's reputation. Every company reputation must be valued. As was mentioned this morning, the reputation of our dear country has been turned so many times. So, of course, stakeholders management. These stakeholders need, also need to be managed. Then corporate social responsibilities also need to be implemented as was mentioned this morning, okay? We want to look at crisis prediction. Some simple guidelines in predicting crisis. Crisis prediction, some guidelines, okay? The crisis must be simple, okay, simple in concept, scientifically complex, slogan ability related to issues, open to spe speculation and data reach. The crisis must be simple and capable of being defined as either black or white. This allows sides to be taken, particularly by the media. For Brent Spa, that was mentioned in the 
uh, manufacturer crisis when this lecture started. The issue of seed dumping was bad, and recycling of the structure was good. Nuclear power is bad as waste cannot be disposed of. Green energy is good, all right? Then scientifically complex. Paradoxically, the science surrounding the crisis must be extremely complex and impenetrable to the ordinary person. This is essential, as otherwise people will be able to make reasoned decision on what is right and what is wrong. So the science surrounding this disposal of brain spa was very complex. How many pollutants were on the spa and how much damage would that have done to the Atlantic Ocean, to the North Atlantic, and of course, damages to the sea creature. Okay, then we have data reach. Today's corporation makes available more data about its performance than, than it ever did. Even confidential information is not safe. What this place is saying is data is a, uh, information are not saved now. In the United States of America, there is a, there is this Freedom of Information Act, which means everybody have access or can have access to every information, okay? So in other words, the major group that can spend months trolling through data, it is then presented as a major leak of a secret point in order to increase its media saleability. Since there is a, I, I was just wondering, this uh, NSAS protest that's going on in Nigeria now got escalated through social media. The people, be, the brain behind it, didn't go to all the states. It was just through social media. What does that mean? Social media, information are one of those um, means through which crisis can escalate or crisis can be subdued. Then we have slogan ability. The crisis must be capable of being summarized in a couple of short ways. This is also the essence of good branding. Like the BMW branding is the ultimate driving machine. Then we have Avis, which says we try harder. Then, then there is this one that says out of sight is out of mind. That has to do with um, uh, in a, that has to do with um, uh, this uh, chemical producing company. Okay. Then we have the law of absolute. They are. There have so these has to be element of doubt. There has to be element of doubt within the debate, which is why scientifically complex and data rich projects can make ideal environmental issues. Can make ideal environmental issues. Sorry, this is a corollary to the law, which says the more you know, the less you know. So as science advances and more complex instruments are developed that are capable of identifying process of events, okay? It becomes to proclaim anything safe. More and more, as science makes advance, it throws new light, but it also shows how imperfect our knowledge is. Ends the law of absolute. Naturally, environmentalists love the law of absolute. It means that there is danger inherent in, in, in everything which they are happy to point out to anyone who still will steal this thing, including media. Okay. Then we have, uh, want to look into design, testing, and implementation. Design, testing, and implementation. Putting a crisis management plan into action does not have to be a long and hazardous or obvious process. However, it has to be approached methodically. There are three important elements to crisis management plan. There are three important elements to any crisis management plan. Most importantly, the people make up the crisis management team. This group of individuals has to be carefully picked to reflect not just skills but personalities to ensure they can work together as a team and can also work well under pressure 
what we are saying here is this there is need as i said earlier for every organization and every country to have what is called crisis management plan and for such plan to be effective there must be crisis management team there must be crisis management team and people that have been involved in, in crisis management team must be people that are ready to work together as a team and they are ready to work under pressure as we know crisis breeds pressure and of course when such pressure come up the crisis management team must be able to work without uh, without being uh, with without being pressurized yeah the processes how the team will work what guidelines and parameters the team will be set and what resources will be available to them all these are must all this must be in place environment where the team will work the first one talked about having a crisis management team the second one talk about the processes through which the team will work then the third one talk about the environment where the team will work what resources are required to keep the team running and how best to ensure that the environment is the best place to actually work. So setting up a crisis management team, setting up a crisis management team. There are some principles that must be applied in setting up crisis management team. Each person who is involved in a crisis must be assigned a role. Each team member must be assigned a role, okay? then no person should take on another person's role. No person should take on another person's role. Then each person should be fully equipped to undo the role given to him or her. Then each person must be tested in the role. Then each person must be tested to ascertain the, the viability and to ascertain that the person is able to carry out the, the assignment. Each member of the crisis team must be aware of the role of other team members. Each, each team member must be aware um, of the roles of other team members. Then we have assembling the team. How do we assemble the team? Any crisis management team should be easy to assemble. Reactions will need to be quick in general in general, it should be possible to assemble to assemble the team within uh, within and her. This has practical implication. Another, what this place is saying is this: whenever there is crisis, the crisis management team should be easily accessible. They also should be easily assembled. They should be assembled as quick as possible, and of course. Um, in order to save the day okay the key members of the crisis team and it is a condition of entering into the team must live within a reasonable distance of the crisis management center so there must be crisis management center and each team member must live not too far from the management center they are of little use to anyone if they are stuck in a motorway in other words if crisis management team member are living far from the crisis management center and there is need for urgent gathering, if such a team member or the team members are hooked up in, uh, in traffic, then uh, the crisis they are, we are trying to prevent or trying to manage will escalate and get out of hand. Then crisis management key roles, what are the key roles of crisis management team. They make key tactical, operational, and strategic decisions. They make key tactical, operational, and strategic decisions. Then to clear information for public use, they also clear information as we have in the switch here, which was discussed earlier for, pub for public use. In other words, they handle information then they manage and support the team. Their key roles is to manage the support team, okay? Each member of the crisis management team should look 
to separate role within the team so that each person has their own responsibilities and procedures during crisis. We want to look at the structure of a typical management team, the structure of a typical crisis management team. We have the crisis, then we have the secretary, then we have uh, the CEO, then we have uh, officers, the officers, then we have sailors, okay? We have a secretary, we have CEO, then the, we have officers, then we have sailors. What are the roles? The best place for any CEO to be when disaster is, is away from the office. It will be an error for CEO to sit in the office while disaster is happening in the field and it's just there. So the best place to be is to be away from the office in public and as the epicenter. Be that outside the same headquarters or at the scene of the crisis, okay? So it should be at the scene. It shouldn't be at the scene of the crisis. Of course, it shouldn't be in the office. Okay, what are the crisis management team leader? Okay, that's the role of CEO. Again, using the Navy analogy, the most high-ranking admirer is sub subservient to the ship's captain while he is on and board. When you have sec the secretary should be present in the crisis room and our full knowledge of the company and its procedures. Then we have the officers, they need the leader in ranking order will be officer Keda, those who are trusted to advise on decisions that need to be made. Then we have operations. The role of the officers with responsibility for operations is to ensure business continuity and that all business operations are adapted in the light of the crisis. Then we have media, the officer in charge of the media must liaise with the reporters, organize press, releases and news conferences and ensure that everyone is fully updated at all times. The public affair, this role will mainly entail liaison with the pleasure groups and then ensure dialogue with key politicians and stakeholders. Then uh, we have public officers. The role will mainly entail, okay, we have internal communication, internal communications. Employees are the ambassadors of the company and your officer with responsibility for employee must ensure that employees are kept updated and informed. Then we have customers and suppliers. Maintaining the reputation of the company is a key priority during crisis. Ensuring solid and consistent customer service is also very crucial. Then we have the legal role also. The role of the lawyer in the crisis is to ensure that the company acts, operates, and makes statements that are legally correct. Then how do we maintain and manage, okay, maintaining and managing responsibility. Maintaining and managing responsibility. As there will be almost definitely an overlap be between each of these sectors. It is essential. It is essential, okay, that each is keenly aware of who is handling what and the extent of their responsibility. By far, the greatest problem in a crisis, okay. Now, I want to look at creating a strong crisis team. How do we create a strong crisis team? As any chef knows, getting the right ingredient is only the first recipe. The next step is to ensure that he has the right mix. Otherwise, it will be quite easy to hand product which is too spicy or too bland, too bland. Okay? So, to create a, a strong crisis team, the materials and the blend must go together. The key objective is to ensure that the team is strong enough to weather the storm ahead, okay? The team is strong enough to weather the storm ahead by the blend of personalities that are put together to be part of the team. It is true that 
teamwork is vital in meeting the challenges faced during a crisis. And they are also to come together. They are also to, they must be able to work together as a team. Yeah, as a team, okay? Many companies have examples of team which are disorganized and where personalities clash. Working to the same goals, working to the same goals. In crisis management, team in a crisis management team, there will be representative from a number of different departments from within the business, okay? These different departments come into conflict with one another. All, however, probably believe that their solution is the right and possibly the only one that will maximize profit and be the best for the company in the long run. For crisis management team to succeed, there must be teamwork. In some team, in some crisis management team, there is possibility of crisis ensuring from within them. Okay. So working together is the key. Because of the smoke track nature of today's corporation, it is possible that those within the team have never actually worked operationally with one another before. And we therefore have different views and attitude. During crisis management training, once you establish all the team members understanding and values, all the team members understanding and value, the focus need to be on building trust and for each team member to get to know his or her colleague and their strength and weakness. Why should be, who should be in the team? Who should be in your team, in your crisis management team? Stress and emotion can run high, high during a crisis, which if not properly understood and channeled, can naturally lead to a negative effect on the team management on the team ability to make decisions and solve problems. The selection process has to be based on person's overall value to the company. The important question we need to be asked, like will they fold, will they fold under enormous pressure? These are the questions that need to be asked and answered. Are they willing to work around the clock to get the job done? Do they understand what, do they understand that the crisis Situation needs to be handled differently from routine work. Okay, these are the questions that need to be asked. Why choosing a crisis management team leader? Choosing a crisis management team leader. The crisis management team leader must, know, must have the following key personality, personality traits. Must have this following key personality traits. Authoritativeness. A team leader must have personality trait of authority. He must be authoritative, then decisiveness, then ability to communicate, then diplomacy, authoritativeness, decisiveness, ability to communicate, then diplomacy. The officer skater, officer skater. The officer skaters also need to have the following traits, personality traits. Um, number one, communication skill. Okay, communication skill. Team playing. I'm not calling no, in order of arrangement, commitment, decision making. Be, it must be calm. That is where this is where uh, emotional intelligence also also comes in. Must be calming. Must be able to delegate. Must be responsive. Then must have good communication skill. Then must be disciplined. Officers must be disciplined. They must have good communication skill. They must have team player. They must be a team playing personnel. It must be committed, it must be decision makers, they must be calm, they must be able to delegate these things, they must also be responsive. Okay, so I want to look at what are the major tragic 
making him what are the responsibility of officers okay making a major strategic decision making major strategic decision then updating the press team and call center information must not be kept away from the people people need to know the truth and so one of the work of uh, management crisis management team is to disseminate good and correct information as at when the internal communication and delegation internal de communication and delegation communication with top level politicians communication with held office parent company and shareholders then keeping the ceo fully updated communication ensuring business continuity they're making approvals relating to budget and and so on if you are still with me if you can still hear me if you are still together please can you just type one one in the chat room if you are still together you can hear me clearly if you are still together if i'm not talking to myself alone if you can hear me clearly please type one one in the chat room okay okay all right thanks so much thanks for your patience all right i want to okay a badly managed crisis can severely damage a company if crises are not well managed it can damage company so a badly managed crisis can damage a company can damage company's reputation can also damage company branding and do it badly and one risk losing the companies the company yeah and do it well and your reputation is enhanced sales increase and the brand is stronger than ever there, there, there was an issue of nike nike and globalization it's called nike yeah nike and globalization nike is at the forefront of what most people understand as globalization it is a brand that reaches across the world but ultimately encapsulate the value system of this country of origin us the company's trainers are fashionable items bought by those in the west and whenever possible by those in the developing world it's a symbol of aspiration in many countries a storm, however, was whipped up following one of the company's design for a new Nike Air trainer in 1997. On the back of the shoe, Nike has designed what looked to be untrained Western eye, like an image resembling flaming body. Nike acted in a way which suggested that it was sympathetic to the sensitivity of others. Nike immediately recalled over 38,000 pairs of their trainers. That was the Western High. However, complaint came flooding in when Muslims claimed that the image was close to Allah for Arab Street for Allah. So, what uh, Nike quickly acted.
Hello? Please, can you still hear me? Please, can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. All right, thanks so much. The network has been so bad. Okay. Okay. Okay, all right. Thanks so much. The next one. I've been, uh, okay. Okay. I wish to I wish it together. Okay. Nike. Okay, I, I was talking about Nike. What happened to Nike? So the crisis, the procedure as it had arrived, certainly there was a cost in the calling thousands of trainers. Nike didn't look at the shortage of recalling those trainers, but they make that very quick decision and they save the reputation of of the company. All right. So if crisis are not well managed, it can lead companies to the company's reputation can be damaged. Companies' product can also be damaged. So we have examples of of unsuccessful crisis management. You can go through your manuals when you have them. Because of my time and the network is not friendly now. Network is bad, it's breaking. Mr. Michael, are you hear me? Director Mike, can you hear me? Please, can someone hear me? If you can hear me loud and clear, please type one in the chat room. No audio, wow. Okay. Mr. Bassi Ogoho, please check your audio. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Abdul Majid. Thank you, Mr. Salifu from Ghana. Thank you. Okay. No audio. Dr. Banito, can you hear me? Okay. Church service is going on. Oh. Oh, sorry. Let, let me relocate. Give me a chair. Okay. Noise in my background. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? There's noise in my background, wow. Okay, favor, can you hear me? Can someone hear me? Oh, oh, network is bad. Can you see any noise in my background? Please, can you still hear me? Uh, please, we let let's 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 adjourn this class because of network issue. Please, let's adjourn the class. Uh, we will meet again tomorrow. We will meet again tomorrow. Uh, the network is not friendly. Or if you want us to continue, if you can hear me, can I get feedback from the chat room? Please, if you want us to continue, uh -oh, attendance, okay.
All right. Uh, okay. As we wait for attendance, let me. It's okay now. You can hear me now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. I want to look at five stages. Five stage framework. Okay. Number one is signal detection. Number one is signal detection. For any crisis to escalate, such a crisis must have been detected. There must there, there will be a signal. So signal must be detected in order for such crisis to be managed or to allow it not to get to escalation state. Then we have a preparation. Better is all right. Thank you, sir. Then we have preparation and prevention. We we need to also prepare in case of crisis. That is the reason why crisis management team must be formed together. And of course, it's possible also to prevent crisis. Then we have containment. Containment has to do with managing, how to contain, how to make sure the crisis does not escalate. Then damage the limitation. Then we have recovery. Recovery has to do with how do we get back those, I mean, after the crisis happened, like we have in the issue of the study case of uh, the case study of Nike, Nike that was mentioned earlier, how to recover back the lost. Then the fifth one says learning. In every crisis, there are lessons we must learn. For every crisis that we experience, there are lessons to be learned. So let's look at them one by one. The occurrence of a crisis always begins with some form of warning. Signal detention is the stage that are advances those warnings. Like we have in cars, I always tell people, when your car is making some noises, just trust me that's possible to put it in order. It's a signal. So signal detection is the stage, is the stage that advances those warnings. Becoming adapt as signal detention is a mindset, as well as a skill that organization needs to embrace. Then we have preparation prevention stage. This stage involves the formation of crisis management team and plan for attacking those crises that may occur. Crisis management is approached in a systematic and ongoing man and effectively manage those that do occur. Then we have the stage which con containment stage, which has to do is this the stage where actual management crises occur. The intent is to contain the crisis to the greatest extent possible, to mitigate the event so that organization and stakeholder damage is kept at the barest minimum. Then we have a um, recovery stage. In this stage, attempts are made to resume activities so as to close normal as visible. The recovery will often proceed in stages as well. In some cases, improvements are made in the recovery process that bring the level of operation up to a higher level than before the crisis. An example would be a company that experiences a fire and is usually better equipped with new machineries and technology than what existed in the old facility. Okay. Then we have the learning. This stage involves activities of freedom. I mean, involve this stage involves activities of reflection where lessons are learned from the crisis. The emphasis is not on searching for scapegoats and displacing the blame onto other parties. Instead, maximum attention is focused on improving current operational problems and preventing the future ones. Then we have the framework for crisis management. We have the internal and external landscape. The internal and external landscape.
we want to look at strategic planning. Okay, we want to look at forming crisis management team. Forming crisis management team. Forming crisis management team. Okay. So form a management crisis management team, there must be an internal organization strategies and uh, internal strategies to and crisis event. Then every company have internal strength. There is internal strength. Internal strength has to do with it comprise of charismatic and organizational leader. That's an internal strength of any organization, charismatic and uh, organizational leader. Some, some, some charismatic leaders have led the organization into financial need because they were not challenged by the board. Then we have a long history of successful performance. Simply being, simply being a successful company will drop criticism from many stakeholders. Employees, employees may feel they are not compensated enough if the company is easily successful. Social minded citizens will feel the company does not share its wealth enough with the local community. The government will watch the companies closer and look for ways that it may be illegally hiding income. Lawmakers will look for a way for a wrongdoing on the part of, of the company so they can establish a reputation among their constituents. <laughs> Then, poorly, then we have internal weakness. We look at internal strength, the internal weakness. Poorly trained employees. Industrial accident in the workplace and poor service to the customers are caused by their potential crisis that are caused by poorly trained employees. In manufacturing setting, defective products will also result. In manufacturing setting, defective products can also result as as a result of poor trainings employees then we have poor relationship with the union if there is poor relationship with the union labor strike during contract negotiation as well as a larger amount of grievances resulting from day to day operation then both of these can lead to secondary crisis negative publicity in the media what this place is saying is this if there is poor relationship with the union between the workforce it could lead to strike, then it could lead to uh, secondary crisis, which has to do with um, some informations that are false or negative informations being put across to, to, the, to the media. Then poor ethical orientation of top management, white collar crime and cash flow problem. If the organization is large, publicity problems will also result. Aging production facilities and equipment. Machines break down, resulting in lost productivity and high operation costs. Industrial accident and poor product quality are also likely to, to come up. Okay. The forming crisis management team and plan. How do we form crisis management team and the plan? We have a crisis management team. We have the internal landscape and external landscape. Remember, we talked about internal weakness and, and external. Internal weakness and internal strength. Now, we want to look at the two ways to manage, I mean, goals of crisis management team. They have internal landscape. They have external landscape. The CMT identifies the crisis threats the organization is facing. Okay, then the CMT developed the crisis management plan. Then the CMT leads training in the area of crisis management. The CMT actively manage the crisis when one occurs. The CMT leads the post crisis evaluation so that learning can also occur. These are their, these are the values. CMT seek to find answers to the following questions. What did we learn from this crisis? 
that will help us prevent a similar one in the future? These are the questions that will need to be answered. What do we learn? If the same crisis will occur again, what will we do differently? If the same crisis will occur again, what will we do differently? Then um, what weakness? What weakness re-existed among the CMT? Then we have uh, the changes need to be made within the CMT. What aspect of the crisis response were performed well? Then uh, what aspect of the crisis response need improvement? Personal characteristic of tri crisis team members. We've looked at the crisis team managers, leaders. We want to look at every member, what are the personal characteristics they must have? Personal characteristics, manifestation, manifestation in the CMT setting. Then we have stress tolerance. Every CMT member must be stress tolerant, must be able to tolerate stress, must be able to tolerate stress, okay? Employees react to stress in different ways. Same do not, some do not tolerate stress well. For CMT members, however, stress should be a motivator, a sort of adrenaline sort that makes them want to manage a crisis environment. Then ambiguity tolerance. Decisions have to be made in the absence of complete information. Ambiguity tolerance is that unique characteristic that allow a decision maker to be effective, even when desired information is not available. Even when desired information is not available. Okay. Then we have listening skills, listening skills. Crisis team members need to be able to listen well to many stakeholders and victims, okay? Presenting their side of the story. Every, every member of crisis, crisis management team must, must be able to listen very well. It's all right. Then, uh, Cooperation, cooperation. Every member must like people to enjoy working in a group. There must be group, there must be, there must be teamwork. There must be teamwork in the group. There must be cooperation. Communication apprehension. All CMT members should be able to express how they feel without any hesitation or concern over rejection from team members. Everybody must be able to express and hear their view, okay? Okay. Then verbal clarity. Good speaking skills is a must. Among team members, communication intention should also be clear. This ability goes back to, the, to, to stress tolerance. Uh, some members may not communicate well verbally when under under duress, under stress. The organizational strategy and crisis, organizational strategy and crisis, organizational strategy and crisis. A five-step strategic control procedure. Top management determines the focus of strategic control by identifying internal factors that can serve as effective ensure for the success or failure of a strategy, as well as outside factors that could trigger responses from organization. Okay, then benchmark are established for internal factor with which the actual performance of the organization can be compared after strategy is implemented. Management measures evaluate the company's actual performance, both qualitative and quantitative. Performance Performance evaluations are compared with the previously established standard. Okay, then if performance meets or exceeds the standard, collective action is usually not necessary. If performance falls below the standard, the management must take remedial action. You want to look at crisis management, taking action when disaster is. Taking action when disaster. 
situational anal analysis component, gathering information and advice from all potential sources, including experts on relevant technical issues. Then recognizing important cues, such as using historical information to build a mental model of the current situation, and they define the key element of the situation. What is our gathering information, okay? Then judging the de degree of risk that is present in the crisis. Reassessing the situation in response to new information that becomes available. Then predicting ahead to the potential consequences that may result, that may result. Sharing information with relevant parties. So during this decision-making crisis, what are the steps to be taken? Alert and assemble the crisis management team. During crisis, what are the steps to be taken? Number one, we must first alert and assemble crisis management team. Then secondly, we must collect all relevant information. All relevant information must also be collected. Learn as much as possible about the situation, including what happened, who is involved, where it takes place, and the current state of crisis. This step not only occurred during situational anal analysis, but also through the duration of the crisis. Then assign tasks and continue fact-finding. The CMT should delegate duties, just like project management team would. And this is where there's correlation between project management and uh, L, I mean, HSE. It's advisable that every HSE, every safety officer, professional should also learn uh, project management. Then the fifth one, the fourth one said develop solution alternative. Identify possible solutions that are practical and capable of being implemented. Then the fifth one says implement the choosing situation. Implementation is often the most difficult part of the process. It requires competent people, time and money. Allocation of sufficient resources is important at this step. Step six, communicate with the media. The organization should be proactive in meeting with the media and presenting the side of the story. If the organization does not communicate, the media must find the fact of the story elsewhere. A situation that takes control out of the hand of the management. So, meaning if the media, if the people are nowhere communicated, if the media are nowhere uh, communicated, of course they will find the information from elsewhere and that makes the situation to be out of control, out of the hand of the management. Then review, then review what happened. Evaluate decision, evaluate the decision that were made and the result that followed. That was what was laid, and how how might such a crisis be handled differently in the in the future? CMT monitoring, crisis management team monitoring. During the crisis, the CMT should monitor events to determine the following: which of the three scenarios appear to be unfolding? Then, what resources are available, and how long will it take to deploy them? Which of these scenarios appear to be unfolding? Not three, which of these scenarios, okay? What resources are available and how long will it take to deploy them? How long will it take to execute a decision or solution? Who and what are the victims of the crisis? Then how do we contain damage? How do we contain man damage? Damage containment is the effort to keep the effect of crisis from spreading and ultimately affecting other parts of the business. To maintain emphasis of crisis management, to maintain emphasis of crisis management should be focused on the three major goals. Number one, gaining complete control of the crisis. Then conducting frequent damage assessment. Then restoring normal operations to the organization. These are the three areas CMT should focus on as their major goal, gaining complete over the complete control of the crisis. The crisis must be controlled, must be under the control of, of the CMT, conducting the frequent damage assessment, then restoring normal operations to the organization. Evaluating what is, what is going right and what is going wrong. 
how the crisis has affected the stakeholders behavior and opinions the extent to which sales or shares prices are or are affected which crisis response strategies and uh, tactics were effective and which have been affected which crisis response strategy are tactics and uh, were effective and were not. There are major tools that can be used to obtain the information necessary. Tracking sales and profit during and after the crisis. Establishing a special com communication for stakeholders to call with questions and comment about the crisis and how it was managed. Conducting focus groups to obtain information from key stakeholders. Conducting surveys of external public to determine their attitude, documenting the information flow to and flow the news media, documenting the information about those strategies that work and those that did not work, investigating why they were and were not effective, why they were effective and not effective. Then crisis communication. Recommended usage and um, uses of various communication strategies. We have strategy post then we have suggested Naya is a strategy poster that needs to be used. Use if the organization is faced with accusation or challenge that has no merit to it. Okay, then do not use with diminishing rebuilding strategies. In other words, if the crisis is not really, if it's a rumor, then it needs to be denied. If the organization is faced with accusation or challenges that has no merit to it, then it will also be denied. When you have diminishment, diminishment. If the crisis involves an accident, use when there is no previous crisis history or unfavorable organizational reputation can be used in combination with rebuilding strategies. Then use if the organization is subject to a victim crisis and does not have a previous crisis history or unfavorable prior organizational reputation. Then we have rebuilding, rebuilding. This strategy can also be used for any crisis that is preventable. It can be used if the crisis involves an accident and the organization does not have a previous crisis history or favorable prior reputation. It can also be used in combination with the diminishment strategies. Then we have bolstering strategy used for supplement, used to supplement the previous three strategies. What are the guidelines for new for news conference? If if uh, if news if media are to be uh, addressed, what are the guidelines? The spokesperson should continually practice and react based on potential questions that may be asked by the media. The spokesperson should seek to develop rapport and be candid with the members of the media. The spokesperson should avoid canned speeches and instead strive for a presentation that is more conversational and spontaneous. Technical experts should be used if necessary to clarify to the public details about the crisis. This person can also serve to fill the technical position from reporters that may go beyond the scope of the regular company spokesperson's management. Then the spokesperson should maintain a sense of calm and concern and not resort to anger over questions from reporters as we have in Nigeria few few months ago uh one of uh, our top uh, respected person politician was asked a question in the press conference and um, the person just couldn't hold on to himself so as a as a sports person of the company there should be a, a sense of calm and concern should be maintained by the spokesperson and not resort to anger over questions from reporters. Of course, some uh, questions will be asked, but the person should be calm, okay? The spokesperson should always report to truth. No attempt should be ever made to mislead the place. The truth should be said. No attempt should be made
to mislead the press. Okay, then um, the media should be allotted three to four hours before a news conference is held. Late morning or early afternoon conference are ideal since they give management time to review his information and also provide ample time for reporters to prepare their story for the evening news. So we want to look at importance of organizational learning, importance of organizational learning, importance of organizational learning. Okay, there are degrees of learning. And uh, of course, there are failures, degrees of learning, and the outcomes. Failure outcome, when there's failure outcomes, then there is no learning at all, no learning at all. Okay, mid-range outcomes, when there's mid-range outcomes, there's learning of course, but it is its application as sporadic. Okay, when there is a successful outcome, then learning of course throughout the organization. Then future impact on organization. The organization continues to make the same mistake if there's no learning at all. Okay. Okay. If there is no, if there is mid-range outcomes, some areas of the organization may change for the better, while others remain same. But if there is learning and the, the outcome is successful, the organization changes its policies, procedures, learning is applied to future crisis events. The strategy posture towards crisis management. If there's or as we have it, and if, or if the failure, if the outcome is failure, meaning there's no learning at all, meaning the organization has not learned, it also means reactive, unwilling, or una unable to learn. The management crisis CMT are unwilling to learn. Then if the is a mid-range outcome, they are reactive, willing to learn, but yet equipped to learn. Then if the outcome is successful, proactive, willing to learn, and take the knowledge to the next step for application. Then we want to look at after the crisis potential. Uh, okay, after the crisis, the potential um, new and crisis management. We we'll look at. Okay, excuse me, please. Okay. Okay, batteries getting low. Batteries getting low. Okay, let's we we'll soon round off the soon round off. Please just bear with us. Okay, let me just quickly jump over this. When we get our manuals, we can read through all this. Then uh, we have an exercise here, but let me go straight to the summary as we round off for the day. In summary, one can look to many indicators. For example, the vulnerability of the industry to environmental damage. Most large companies, as part of their risk assessment, undertake an assessment on how likely it is that a particular crisis will eat them. It is extremely valuable exercise and should be undertaken with due rigor. When the management of crisis go bad, wrongly, it is usually because the corporation has either ignored or failed to recognize the importance of some of the indicators. Okay, most importantly, the people make up crisis management team. This group of individuals has to be carefully picked to reflect not just skills, but personalities to ensure they can work together as a team and also work well uh, under pressure. That is where the where the use, this is where soft skill comes to play. Then each member of the crisis management team should look to separate role, to separate role within the team so that each person has their own responsibilities and procedures during crisis. Thanks you very much for listening and uh, for giving me the attention at this point in time, I don't know if anybody have any question. We can ask question now as we want to run off. Does anybody have any question? Can we hear me? 
Can someone hear me? Can someone hear me? If you can hear me, please just. Am I speaking to myself? Hello, I will. Hear me, please type one one in Please, can you? Please do you have any questions? 